Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace of God our Father, and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. And, and with your spirit. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, hearty welcome once again to the Eucharist. Uh, let's, as one family, all, all over, pray to God, to God to help us to immerse ourselves in the, our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection, which is what every Eucharist is. We receive God in the Eucharist, even though you're not receiving Holy Communion. You're hearing the Word of God. This is the real presence of God, as Vatican Council has told us. Let's prepare ourselves now for this Word of God, for the spiritual communion that you'll receive, by putting ourselves in God's presence, Ask Him to have mercy on us, forgive us our faults, restore us once again to spiritual health, and bring us close to Him. And so humbly we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity. Make us love what you command, that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion 
at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with this knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to God's Word, Great are the works of the Lord. Together, Great are the works of the Lord. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord to be pondered by all who delight in them. Response Great are the works of the Lord. Majestic and glorious His work. His justice stands firm forever. He has given us a memorial of His wonders. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Response Great are the works of the Lord. He gives food to those who fear Him, keeps His covenant ever in mind. His mighty works He has shown to His people by giving them the heritage of nations. Response Great are the works of the Lord. Kindly stand. We prepare to receive Jesus in the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Together. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out and they could not reply to these things the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ this is in brothers today the first reading read by Father Neil uh, of the Philippians. We begin a new letter, as I told you, uh, of Paul today. So far we've been hearing from the, his letter to the Ephesians, and today it's from the Philippians. My greeting, my liturgical greeting to you also, was from the grace and peace of God our Father and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is... The second of the options is again, I took it because uh, this is the very beginning of uh, Philippians, the letter to the Philippians from Paul, and it gives an indication also to share with you that many of the prayers in the Mass are scriptural. This greeting is taken from Paul. He used it for the Ephesians, used it for the over here uh, for Philippians. For several of his books, he begins with this greeting, theological. 
the grace and peace, the gift of peace and grace, the blessings of God our Father, the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the whole Trinity comes uh, over us. That's what he wishes to us. And then the whole, this letter of the Philippians, for Philippians uh, is really uh, addressed to the people of the Philippi. This was a town uh, which was founded by the Greeks. Uh, Philip was the father of Alexander the Great. And uh, it was founded in his honor. And the town grew up. It was very affluent because there were mines, silver mines, they tell you, and gold mines close by, uh, which by the time of Jesus already were exhausted, the mines, the silver and the gold had been extracted already. But uh, it was a rather affluent place. And the Romans came, the Romans conquered it, and Romans sent, uh, they said they built a colony there of the senior retired soldiers and their families. And so it was really a town that was sort of uh, people who were Gentiles were there, some Jews were there, but Romans were there, many of them, so they were not really Jews. And Paul went there, and if you, when we read the letter of the Philippians, it's a letter full of joy. Uh, sometimes we see Paul is angry and tells them about their faults. Here it's a letter full of joy. There's not much to scold them about uh, in the sense that he uh, he converted lots of people over there. Finally, he had to leave because there was a controversy. Paul is a friend of controversies. He always invites because of his temperament. And he finally had to leave the place. They were threatened to imprison him. and But he, the people there liked him very much. Uh, interestingly, this is the only place, uh, only where he had uh, worked, where he accepted gifts uh, from. Uh, the, the different places when he went, his people thought about him and his work, and they sent somebody with some gifts to help him in his work. And other places he did not accept him. But here from the Philippians accepted. So he had special love for the Philippians. Here also the, the very reading that we have heard uh, this morning, this also speaks about how happy I am with you. From the very first time I came to you, you accepted the message of Jesus. I am so happy that you are uh, behaving well, you are following Jesus, and uh, you have been with me. You are, he says, I hold you in my heart, he says. You are uh, partakers of all I do. Joyful moments also when I am in prison. So really, it's a, it's a letter full of affection, joy, a personal letter. I mentioned to you when we were reading Ephesus that uh, although he really worked a lot there, uh, for some, quite some time, a couple of years, uh, there's not no not much of personal reference. That's why we were also saying, wondering whether it's a circular letter. This is certainly addressed to the Philippians, to them especially, and they do not have any major problem. You'll see, as we hear him in the next uh, few days, next week, we hear the letter to the Philippians, encouraging. And so for us also, moment of encouragement, many good things also happen. He was not always scolding. He was joyful, thanking God, praising God, and encouraging. And he says, you must be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Wait for Jesus to come again, Christ to come again. Be complete. Preserve your unison, preserve your faith, preserve your unity, preserve your love and charitable works. The Gospel passage, again, it's the same theme which... Uh, Paul has been insisting, uh, following up the teachings of Jesus. Uh, Jesus uh, had friends among the Pharisees also. Uh, we saw yesterday that the, some Pharisees warned him that Herod wants to kill you. He, he was so strong with them, hypocrites, and etc. he called them. But uh, some of them invited him for dinner here today. One of the leaders of the Pharisees invited him for dinner. And Jesus went. Jesus went for many of these occasions to be able to use them f to spread the good news, to teach them. It was, he, never, he never kept thought that they were outcasts. He should not deal with them. So here they, he said they, he went over there and all the Pharisees were observing him. They knew that he was controversial in the sense that he was talking about the law not being so important as love being important. Jesus was trying to educate them said it yesterday's gospel, how I wish that you would listen to me like a mother hen wanting all her chicks, 
But you would not. You, you stone the prophets, you kill the prophets, he says. That's what you do. And here, once again, he says, uh, he sees a man, he's having dinner, and then uh, this was on the Sabbath. So it was a holy day, prayerful day. He probably preached in the synagogue uh, in the morning, then comes over here, the family invites him. And there are also, but it was not a private dinner. When, he, when Jesus went, it was a public occasion. Everybody came to see him, to hear him. And now this man who was sick with dropsy also comes and he wasn't a guest because he says he healed him and sent him away. So he wasn't a guest. He came there just to see Jesus and just to hear Jesus and in the hope that Jesus might do something for him because he had heard so much about Jesus' wonders. Jesus sees him, has compassion on him. Uh, here's again, you see, remember the lady who was 18 years uh, bent over? She didn't ask him to uh, heal him. She came to hear him. He saw her, had compassion on her pain. Here too, he doesn't ask anything of Jesus. Jesus sees him, has compassion on him, and immediately heals him. But the question he asks is very, very logical. He's trying to educate them. If you had your, If your child fell into a well, would you say, I can't work? Let him be there till the Sabbath is over. He would drown and die. Okay, son, understand about that. But ox, even an animal falls, you would not leave it to die. You would immediately go to hell. So here, this, lay, this person is suffering. Would I let him just suffer over there? Can't I help him? One day more of suffering, that lady here again. So he, he And they didn't answer him. They didn't challenge him. They knew that what he was saying was sense. And so... Uh, it's important for us, you sisters and brothers, to understand more and more what uh, Jesus is trying to teach us. Sunday's Gospel, love of God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Love your day by yourself. This is all the law and the commandments, all the law and the prophets. What does it mean in your life, in my life? How charitable are we? How kind are we? How compassionate are we? How merciful are we? Uh, Pope Francis realizes that this is one of the challenges of our time. We have become individualistic, selfish, unconcerned, my, me and mine more than all of us and, and ours. And therefore he keeps on talking about this over and over and over again, disturbing people who are comfortable. We also examine our lives to see if we use the law as a pretext for not doing good. We've got to be kind, show love to everybody. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. the best to this water and wine, we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you, please and receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. So it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be cursed in our life, we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray to our Heavenly Father in the very words Jesus himself taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are, are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, with your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. It's always a sign of peace. Christ, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. You only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O oh Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in science, one day we may possess in truth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Have a lovely day, lovely evening. Today is Friday, so no catechesis, but pray to the Sacred Heart. Today is Friday, we pray to Sacred Heart. May the Sacred Heart have mercy on all of us. God bless you. Lovely day. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, 
who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.